Hello, my name is Joan McSween and we're here today at the Winter Garden Library. It is Tuesday, December the 11th, 2012. Sir, may I ask your name? My name is Fred Shepard. Good afternoon, Mr. Shepard. How are you? I am very well, thank Good. you, sir. May I ask how it is that you came to be in the West Orange area? Uh -huh. The way I got here, I was born here in Winter Garden. And um, so consequently, I've lived here in this area all my life. The, uh, with the exception of two or three times when my father was employed by the, what used to be called the Florida Telephone Company. And after I was born, he was transferred to Gainesville or north of Gainesville. Then he was transferred again back to Dade City. And uh, when I was in the second grade, they moved him back to Winter Garden. So I came back home, I guess you could say, and uh, started in the uh, elementary school, which was located on South Main Street. Mrs. Uh, Brock was the principal. So I went to school there from the second grade to the sixth grade. <clears throat> and then after that, I went to Lakeview. I graduated from Lakeview High School in 1948. And uh, consequently, those are some uh, very good memories. As I look back upon them, both the ladies who were principal, Miss Brock, uh, she lived out in Oakland, and uh, she was a very fine lady. And Ms. Gratton, who was the principal of uh, Lakeview High School, she was very fine. In fact, Ms. B Ms. Gratton retired the year that our class, that we graduated. And uh, she was a very strict disciplinarian. We didn't like it then, but she taught us many things that we, as we got older, we began to look back upon our lives. And, and uh, one of the things she did, I thought, and I'll be quite honest with you, when she had us do it, I didn't like it. <clears throat> but everybody, when you were a senior, you had to take typing. There was no exception. Every student went to typing class. And, you know, you, you know at that age, you were maybe back in those days, you didn't question authority too. Well, you did, but maybe you weren't verbal about it. Let's put it that way. Anyway. Uh, I managed to get through it, and then, but later on when I went to college, I really appreciated what she made us do. And uh, so consequently, uh, she was a very favorable influence on a lot of people's lives. So was Mrs. Uh, Brock. In Lakeview High School, I participated in the, uh, in the band. I played from the seventh, <coughs> excuse me, the seventh grade to the twelfth grade. I was involved in the newspaper and and uh, some other things in which I really can't pull up at this point in time. But it, it was a very favorable uh, experience as I look back upon it. It was a small school, you know. We didn't have the facilities that are located at the middle school today. The only thing was there was that center building, and uh, there was no gym but we had plenty of room outside and uh, they would, uh, in physical education, they'd line you up in the back of the school and let you run all the way out to the clay road and then back around the whole entire property and then back and you were, you were, uh, <clears throat> you were ready to quit anyway. So consequently, it was a, it was a good experience. Winter Garden, when I was growing up, it, it was a very small town. I remember the uh, the uh, police department, if you could call it. Well, I don't mean that derogatory. It was just a small building, probably no larger than a six by eight. It was across the street from, uh, let's see, there is a, uh, oh goodness, beauty parlor on that corner. It's at the corner of where uh, Boyd Street starts and goes south. Anyway, <clears throat> it was right across there, and uh, consequently, it was uh, all they had in there was a phone, and th whoever was on duty, I guess, stayed there for a while, or they were out. But I always remember that. And uh, across the street was Mr. Kappelman's grocery store. Now this was Mr. Thurlow's, because there were two Kappelmans. Uh, Mr. Franklin. I mean, uh, Mr. William Kappelman, he had the other store down 
where the Bloom Cricket is now. And uh, <clears throat> that's where I had my first job with Mr. Kaplan. And uh, I think I was 12 years old anyway. I only worked on Saturday. And uh, the my job was that his store did not have a meat market. And Mr. Will's store did have a meat market. And back in those days, people would bring you their grocery list in and just hand it to you. And the, uh, the, eve, the Saturday evening, everything was predicated upon one thing, and that was the movie. So you got, a, you got the orders before the first movie, and then you had to get all that ready, and then those folks would come and get their groceries, and then right after that, here comes the second group. So consequently, it, it all worked out. It was, it was long hours, I'll put it that way, because we stayed there until we cleaned the whole store. We, we got through about 12.30. <laughs> so from 7 in the morning until 12.30, you know, at night. And, and, uh, but it was good. It was a good experience. Mr. Kappelman uh, was a very fine gentleman. And uh, being the new kid on the block there, <clears throat> one day he called me back to his little office and he said, this is on me, but I don't mind telling it. He said, I want you to go to uh, the economy store, which was then located on South Main, <clears throat> where the window and mirror store um, is at now. Anyway, he says, I want you to ask the manager uh, for the bag stretcher. And you know, a 12 year old kid, you just did not question his authority. I said, yes, sir. So, so I went out the door and I walked all the way down. There. Well, when I got there, the manager said, I'm sorry, but I don't have it. It's over at the A&P store, which was about a block from where we were at. So I went back to the A&P store. <laughs> and of course I got there and they said, I'm sorry, I don't have it. So they sent me to another one the other way, you know. So uh, finally, <clears throat> at the, he told me down, he says, go back and tell Mr. Kappelman, I just don't have it. So when I got back, you know, everybody would just bust in a gut laughing. <laughs> but it was a good, you know, it didn't hurt my feelings. He's the one who told me to do it, so I did it. But uh, the back stretcher's always <laughs> very <laughs> stayed with me in my memory. They ran a... Uh, a uh, delivery service on Tuesday during the summertime. He let me work there some, and, and uh, the uh, he always delivered groceries out to Gotha, Windermere, and that section. And uh, people would phone in their orders, and you'd fill them and take them out there, and we delivered the groceries and the cow feed and whatever it had to go out there, you know. And I always remember there was one man who always met us in a boat. We had his groceries in a box, you know, so we'd give them to him, and then the way he'd go off in his, you know, in his, uh, in his boat. And so, those were fond memories. And so, I, uh, I've, I've really been blessed in seeing, I guess you could call it blessed, in seeing the change, you know, that as they have evolved in this end of the, uh, in this end of the county. Um, so consequently, it was a. Uh, a good experience when a garden has always had good people in it. Uh, people who uh, were interested in the town were trying to make it as well as they could. And uh, if you look at some of these old pictures back in the 1919, then that's when my parents came here. I had an aunt tell me one time uh, she and her child, they came in on the train, and it was in December. And she said it had rained, and said when the train stopped, here she was. My uncle was late in meeting her anyway. Here she was with a young child, a muddy road, <laughs> just to walk in and so forth. She, that was one of her first memories of it. But you know, we've come a long way since that that uh, point in time. The uh, the school system was good back in those days, and uh, of course, uh, I think they've improved upon it today. So, it's uh, that is just a part of it. I uh, 
I went to the, uh, after I graduated, I went to the University of Florida and uh, graduated from up there. And uh, that was uh, lots of uh, hard work and good memories too. Then I was in the Army for a while and uh, married. I have two sons and uh, the one still lives here in Orange County and the other one lives in Lake County. And uh, uh, when Sue and I got married, we lived uh, on John's Lake for about 10 years until the turnpike came through. And when it came through, it was about uh, 50 feet from where the house was. So we found uh, some property over in Oakland and built a house over there. And that's where we've resided since that time. Uh, the, uh, I think we're a garden. You know, we went. Every, I think every town goes through peaks and valleys, and uh, when the garden went through their their slump, you know, for some time, it just it didn't seem like we could pull it out. But that was simply because of, I think, of other things such as the development of Highway 50 and big stores coming in and, and uh, shopping centers and so forth, and evidently that's going to pull the people away. Uh, but it doesn't mean that your downtown area can't be redeveloped. It just simply means it takes time to do it. And uh, so consequently, it's a, uh, part of the uh, process. In the growing up period, I've always had horses up until some years ago. And uh, we used to ride a lot. My, uh, first trip to Oakland when I was in high school. That was one of our favorite pastimes. Nobody had a car, but it, you could either have a horse or borrow one and we'd all go riding, you know. So I rode to Oakland. I was by myself and I didn't really know where I was going. I just, I knew I was going west. And uh, so I finally got there and I said, uh, I, I was a little embarrassed because I didn't, <laughs> didn't know what it was. But Mr. Uh, Gully, he had a grocery store there of sorts, and uh, uh, so that uh, was a good experience for me. Of course, you know, back in those days, you could just ride, with, you know, as long as it wasn't fenced, you could get in and you just uh, just go. And uh, so anyway, it was uh, uh, quite an experience. My, my wife was born and raised there. So consequently, after I learned my way around, I could ride my horse out there once in a while and see her. And their father had a grocery store there, so he, uh, one day I uh, rode out there and then I tied my horse to the, to the telephone post and went in the store to get something to drink and I came back and my horse was gone. And uh, <clears throat> I said, no. Looked around, I thought, well, surely I hope he didn't get away, you know, because they'll go back home, you know, just they just go anyway. So I waited and waited, nobody saw the horse or anything, and then finally, about a half an hour later, here come, here come Sue and her friend up there. They had gotten my horse, and they'd gone to ride.